Earlier this week, CNN's Chris Cuomo went an entire hour without mentioning the sexual harassment scandal surrounding his brother, New York Governor Andrew Cuomo. This might have been okay if CNN had said from the very beginning that Chris Cuomo cannot objectively cover his brother, and therefore others will, but that hasn't what has been what happened. Instead, he cheered him on and praised him throughout the pandemic. As Glenn Greenwald recently tweeted, CNN's idea that it was all right for Chris Cuomo to interview and report on his brother when he was popular, but quote, now cannot utter a word about his serious scandals is pitiful. Glenn went on to say that CNN wallowed in unethical journalism and is now stuck in this corner. Host of the Katie Halper po Show podcast and co-host of the Useful Idiots podcast, Katie Halper joins us now to discuss the media coverage of Governor Cuomo. Welcome to the show, Katie. Thanks for having me. So what do you, how do you think CNN should be dealing with this? And how do you think that Chris Cuomo should be dealing with the scandal regarding his brother? I mean, it's pretty shameful. I, I definitely agree with what Glenn Greenwald said. Um, you know, what we saw is that he's obviously been mentioned in this report, in the attorney general's report. But what's pretty pathetic is that back in May, when it was revealed that he uh, had advised his brother in kind of this dam, you know, PR uh, damage control, uh, that was revealed. And CNN actually offered Chris Cuomo a leave of absence so he could advise his brother without simultaneously working at CNN. And Chris Cuomo declined that offer. And of course, CNN could have demanded it and would have if they were remotely responsible and took journalistic ethics remotely seriously, which they don't. Um, and, you know, there's such a pervasive and entrenched culture of entitlement and enabling, and there's so much um, uh, impunity that, you know, Chris Cuomo at this point, this was back in May, he acknowledged it was a mistake to be advising his brother, but he had the gall to say on air during his show, I am family first, job second. So what kind of apology is that? What kind of acknowledgement of, of guilt is that? I mean, it's just ridiculous. It's so infuriating. And these are just things that we happen to know about, right, publicly. But behind the scenes, there are all sorts of conflicts of interest that never even get exposed, let alone uh, addressed. I think what's especially fascinating, you know, that's come out of this attorney general investigation is just how closely Chris Cuomo was working with his brother to the extent yeah. that he was like drafting his statements, you know, well purporting to be someone who objectively covers the news. But I think what's obvious here, too, is that it's not just Chris Cuomo at CNN. It's almost sort of the entire network that's wrapped around whatever Andrew Cuomo Axel this is. We had host Don Lemon sort of ad addressing the, the Cuomo scandal on his show. But right after he sort of treats Chris, Cu Chris Cuomo like a victim that's in need of support, we have that clip. We can play it here. And our thoughts have to go out to the families of these officers who took their own lives. I'm going to make my witness, as you say. And you make know your what? Witness. I love you, brother. I love you, D. Lemon. All right. This is Don Lemon tonight. The calls are getting louder and louder. This is what I'm talking about. Top Democrats from New York to the White House calling on Governor Andrew Cuomo to resign. So I mean, ask Katie, how do you respond to that? <laughs> I mean, it's so inappropriate in so many ways. One is that they, they transition kind of like without any segue from something really <laughs> serious, right? They're talking about, I, I think, officers from January 6th killing themselves, or they're talking about the deaths of, of certain police officers. I, I'm not sure which, which ones, but that's a pretty serious downer, and they're chumming it up and laughing and smiling um, as if they didn't just talk about that segment. John Lemon has a big smile on his face, then makes a joke about how he's going to be a witness and then uh, then says to Cuomo how much he loves him. Again, like, yeah, as if, you know, I'm here for you. Yeah. Yeah, it's really, really obvious that the entire network, at least that evening lineup when they do this kind of handoff, and I know, you know, like MSNBC does it, a lot of them, you know, in, in Fox does it, where they kind of want to seem like they're of a family and, um, and chummy. And, but that's kind of the problem, right? The problem yeah, exactly. is... How can anybody be objective? How can Don Lemon be objective? How can any of them be objective when they're calling, you know, hey, Chris Crump, brother, and love ya? And uh, so then right. it does definitely call into question how hard are they going to go on Andrew Cuomo when Chris is obviously going to be hurt by that story? You know, understandably, it, the, the scandal is going to be uh, something that the entire family takes personally. But then CNN making Chris family in that way, uh, it, right. it definitely calls into question 
how they can be independent. Yeah. It's, a, it's interesting, right? Because we he said he's family first, job second. And then you have Don Lemon calling him a brother, which is kind of ironic. I mean, maybe he's trying to normalize brotherhood and, and distract from the fact that Andrew and Chris are actually biological uh, <laughs> brothers. But uh, I think that what you just spoke to is really important, too, which is that there's a kind of more general um, incestuous relationship between the powerful uh, media players and powerful politicians. This just happens to be an actual you know, biological relationship, but we have all, this is so enmeshed. You know, Andrea Mitchell is married to Alan Greenspan. Um, all these people, you know, how can you be objective when you're like rubbing sh uh, shoulders with these people or sleeping in the same bed as these people or, you know, at family reunions with these people or seeing them regularly, um, which is just a problem that really just pervades our, our media um, and something we have to remember. But I just want to point out to people how much, as you said, um, he's advising, as both of you said, how much he's advising his brother, uh, there was a statement that uh, he emailed, uh, Chris emailed, that said, questions have been, and this was advice that his brother should, should say, right? Questions have been raised about some of my political, my personal, sorry, inside, my personal interactions with people in my office. I spend most of my life at work and colleagues are often also personal friends. I never intended to offend anyone or cause any harm. Sometimes I am playful and make jokes. You have seen me do it at briefings hundreds of times. My only desire is to add some levity and banter to what is very serious business. And then this is the statement he released on his website. Um, Questions have been raised about some of my past interactions with people in the office. I never intended to offend anyone or cause any harm. I spend most of my life at work and colleagues are also often personal friends. Anyway, and it goes on and on. It's basically the same thing verbatim. Um, and another thing that we should remember is that the fact that it took so long for Cuomo to face any kind of pressure to resign is kind of stunning because there's not just this scandal where he faced numerous allegations that now have been corroborated in, in a, you know, hundreds of pages of a report, but he has blood on his hands uh, for how he handled nursing home deaths or how he handled COVID. And forget, okay, I say his blood on his hands. Even if you don't think his blood on his hands, hands there was a cover up. We, we, we know that because someone in his, his administration admitted that he covered up the numbers of nursing home deaths. So this is a guy who should have been forced to resign, you know, months ago. And it's shameful that it took this long. Well, I think for one- the call. Yeah, you've hit on one element that I just find so disgusting about this whole story is that, you know, you called it out the casualness of the handoff between, you know, Don Lemon and Chris Cuomo. But that's been how they've treated this entire, every element of the story for months. I mean, to the point that you just raised, there were p people dying in nursing homes, massive cover-ups. And, you know, the best Chris Cuomo can do is bring his brother on and joke with giant Q-tips, you know, about the, the, how they share giant noses. Like, They've been treating this story with just casualness that is was undeserved on so many levels. And I think Glenn Greenwald is right, too, when he said they've almost painted themselves into a corner now. Mm -hmm. Like this right. is, you know, so I guess in your mind, like if you're CNN, how do you walk this back? Like, how do you put this toothpaste back? Well, that's that's a problem. It's such a systemic problem. Right. So th anything they do now is kind of superficial band-aid solution. So I think what's really more useful about this story is it just is kind of a window into how how normalize this uh, inappropriate uh, relationship between the powerful in media and the powerful in politics or the powerful in finance, um, wherever it is, you know, is. And we have to look at that. And, and, and again, this is, it's, a, it's compounded by the fact that it's often not even revealed or acknowledged, right? It's like one thing if you acknowledge it, it would be one thing if Chris Cuomo was said, I can't report on my brother at all. I can't have my brother on the show. We're gonna have a firewall. That would be one thing. I mean, there'd still be this problem that you both alluded to, which is a more general cozy relationship between the media and the subjects of, of the media. But uh, at least there would have been some honest reckoning with it. And as Glenn points out, you can't have it so that when things are going well for this guy, you're interviewing him and you're having him on a show. And then all of a sudden, when it's not good, you don't mention it. Because what you're doing is you're letting this guy ingratiate himself in, to your audience. And then when something bad happens, you're you're basically erasing that by not talking about it. So it's like you got to pick a lane. And again, it's pathetic because either way, it's a pathetic situation. There's really not going to be any objectivity. And, you know, Don Lemon hangs out with Chris Cuomo. So as you were saying earlier, like, of course, there's going to be general like, you know, this th there is no firewall. And so even if they had totally siphoned off, you know, 
Chris and Andrew, you'd still have the friends of this person covering their good friend's brother. Yeah, and that's ultimately, I think, one of the biggest problems. And that's why we call it establishment media, right? It's establishment, and they're part of the establishment that's running Washington. And it's just... um, you know, I, I, yeah. the, I think what what needs to kind of I think what hopefully viewers kind of take away from this, but who knows if they will, is clearly, you know, a lot of people put their trust in a network like CNN and they think that is news. But the most trusted really network, kind of, right? And they need to understand that it's entertainment. I mean, a lot of it is they're there for ratings. They're trying to get they're entertaining. And that's why when Chris would bring on his brother and he's, you know, joking around. And, um, you know, so I think hopefully maybe this kind of, I mean, you'd think, right? You hope that the audience would kind of pick up on this and say, oh gosh, you know, maybe this isn't so objective after all. And right. maybe this is- But how are they going to pick up on it? Because CNN's not going to yeah. report on it. Hopefully they're watching this, right? But, yeah. and, and Andrew also, <laughs> Chris also got um, special access and treatment when he had COVID. Yeah. Uh, no, there's a, like there's a just COVID. so many elements to the story. Unfortunately, we have to leave it there, but thanks so much yeah, for being with us, Katie. we all day. <laughs> we will. <laughs> thanks, Katie. <laughs> And we'll have more rising after this.